My sister is refusing to take the family Christmas picture this year. This isn't exactly surprising. In years past, she has often strongly protested whatever overly holiday-ish theme is suggested for our annual family holiday card. No, she will not pretend to drink a cup of hot cocoa. No, she will not dress in red and green. No, she will not wear one of the multitudes of terrible Christmas sweaters that are unironically stacked in my stepmother's closet. Why is our Christmas picture always so angsty? My sister asks as we make pies the night before Thanksgiving this year. My brother and I are quiet for a moment and then finally he pipes up. What if we took this year's Christmas picture with Halloween masks, he asks. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that, snaps my sister. I have no idea why the Christmas picture is always so angsty, I say. In my sister's defense, most of those years of protest were fueled by her closet recreational drug habit. During her college years, conversations between her and my stepmother would end in a blaze of screaming arguments punctuated by the sound of a car peeling out of the driveway. Once my sister has made up her mind about something, there is no changing it, and no matter how ridiculous her premise is, she would rather die than relinquish her hold to it. That is why she is the only one not wearing an ugly Christmas sweater in our ugly Christmas sweater Christmas picture, and why she decided that gray and orange would be the preferable holiday palette in our Christmas scarf Christmas picture. Just take the stupid picture, I plead with her annually in an effort to wrangle her into the photo. What's the big deal? Eventually, unwillingly, she succumbs, a Christmas miracle. My sister, the tattoo-sleeved, tongue-pierced rebel child who now has a lucrative career performing veterinary surgery and regularly makes pumpkin pie from scratch. She simultaneously has it all together and the potential to go postal at any moment. <laughs> One second she is your closest confidant, the next she is storming out of the house. She can explain the theory of relativity, but is utterly unable to articulate what she is feeling when she gets backed into a corner. And the family Christmas card picture is the ultimate corner. <laughs> we take it a few days after Thanksgiving when my siblings and I, and sometimes my grandfather, are in town, and everyone converges on my father and stepmother's suburban house in Northern California for the holiday. Pies are made, food is had, there are a few Christmas movies at home in the den with popcorn. Thanksgiving dinner itself is remarkably drama-free. My brother and I even do a little Christmas carol duet with a ukulele after the meal. The next evening, there is the, ma the Main Street oak tree lighting, akin to something out of Pleasantville. And then, before we all depart the home front, we gather for the annual Christmas picture. And when the picture actually happens, it's cute. It's mounted to a fun little card with a cute little caption and it goes in the mail to friends and family for the holidays. My stepmother doesn't do Facebook, so one can imagine that this card is the ultimate squish of all the things she would be posting on Facebook for a year snowballed into one intense burst of Rockwellian family glee for all to see. There is a lot riding on the success of the Christmas picture. Predictably, a successful family photo is pretty much born from the intense family drama that comes before it. Whether it's my sister pitching a fit about what we are wearing or my grandfather threatening to drive back to Reno in the middle of our five-part Christmas backflip picture, whatever has happened five minutes or, may <laughs> or maybe even five seconds before the photo is snapped is completely foreign to the holiday joy that is depicted in the picture. <laughs> For instance, this year, my alcoholic father, after six months of sobriety, decided to start drinking again. The night before the picture taking, my brother, stepmother, and I attend the town tree lighting. My sister, would rather die than attend the town tree lighting and stays the night with a friend. My dad doesn't join us either. Lots of walking is hard on him now. But as we reconvene at home after the lighting, it is apparent that my father has been partaking in some Christmas cheer in our absence. 
Immediately, visions of his last drinking-induced hospital stay six months earlier when he coded on the table rush into my head. In an act of great emotional maturity, I flee to my room. Behind me, I hear my stepmother prodding my father to follow, and moments later, he is at my door. What's going on, he says. Have you been drinking, I ask. Baldly, bravely, I've never had the courage to ask this question directly to my father's face before. He's just as surprised as I am. No, he says quickly, automatically. Why is everyone always on my case? I can't recall a time when, to my knowledge, my father has flat out lied to me. Sure, there are always secrets, especially around drinking. There are broken promises about stopping and getting help and finding sponsors and going to the meetings and what's that drug you can take that makes you nauseated when you have alcohol? I'll get that. But certainly never straight to my face lies like this one. This is a lie. My brother appears in the hallway and I quickly nod to him. He goes to get the breathalyzer test we keep in the house because that's normal. <laughs> and my dad registers a blood alcohol content of 0.13. For him, that means seven, seven drinks. We send him to bed, make popcorn, and watch Miracle on 34th Street. This disconnect between the actual dynamics of the family and those portrayed in the Christmas picture has always bothered me. But growing up in the family of an alcoholic, it also seems logical to exert control over what we can we can take a Christmas picture. When everything else is unraveling around us, that much we can do. The next morning, as picture time descends, I hear my sister arrive downstairs. I open my bedroom door in time to see my father emerge from his room in a bright green shirt the color of Will Ferrell's elf suit. <laughs> it's a color my father would normally never wear and this gay holiday apparel con contrasts sharply with his steps as he descends the staircase, his careful gait a result of numerous surgeries on his knees, the residual pain of past detoxing episodes, and today, of course, from being hungover. As I watch him, I suddenly realize something about my sister. She is not crazy. She is right. Through all of her inexplicable tantrum throwing and rageful storming, there is always one purely distilled through line, honesty. She doesn't filter herself or her reactions, extreme as they may be. And even though she may not be able to articulate why the Christmas picture angers her so, in this moment, I understand that it is because there is something inherently dishonest about spending our lives prioritizing the perfect family portrait that defines us once a year, instead of the messy human truth that defines us every day and is so desperately in need of our attention. My sister doesn't deal well with bullshit. And this, I think, as I watch my father force a holiday spring into his step at the bottom of the stairs, is fucking bullshit. I join my family downstairs, and when my stepmother suggests locations for the picture, I am quiet. When my sister says on cue that she will not take the picture, I move to stand beside her. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Tiffany Tay.